welcome to another video. So, I keep looking for some good stuff, especially the AI coding things. Recently, I saw that OpenAI updated their API to support predicted output, and it's especially good in coding. But, me being a person who looks at things very closely, I saw that they were showing off that feature on a platform called Exponent, and it intrigued me quite a bit to see what this platform is about. So, I went to the site and saw that it is supposed to be an AI pair programmer like Ader or Klein. But then, I saw that it is in early access, and you need to sign up, and then they'll give you access like Lightning AI or the GitHub code spaces. So, I added myself to the waitlist, and I got the access. It was actually quite fast, because I got access the next day itself. So, now, I have its access, and I wanted to try it out. First, let's talk about what Exponent is supposed to be, an AI coding agent that you can run through their web interface. What it does is connect to your local machine, and then write code, edit code, or run commands on your machine. It is quite like how Cursor's Composer works, but instead of giving you an editor on your machine, it gives you a coding agent of sorts that can also be used as a desktop app, or can also be used on the web by just running a server on your desktop that connects to it. It apparently allows you to connect to your local machine and write code there. Or, you also have the cloud thing that allows you to give it a GitHub repo or something, and it just does it on a cloud VM. Although, it is not accessible to me because it is apparently in early testing or something. There also seems to be a VS Code extension listed on their site, but it is, again, not accessible to end users. So, it may be that it will be rolled out later because it's currently in early access. There's also a shell option that allows you to just use it from the terminal as well. So let's get in and see how well it performs and if it has any limits or not. Now the first time you enter, it will ask you to set up the exponent client thing on your machine so that it can communicate with your project on your machine and make edits to it. So I got it installed and after that, what you need to do is go to the project in which you want to make the edits, and then you'll need to start the exponent server there with this command. Then, it will open up the chat interface of exponent where you can chat. It's quite a hassleful onboarding because it requires you to set up the local connection at all costs. So, that's one thing. But now, we have the chat interface here. Here, you can see the history of your chats along with files and stuff. You can see that it is connected to the local machine. If we go to the profile page here, then you can see that in the free tier, you only get 20 messages, which is quite low to be honest, and the paid plan costs $50, which is quite a lot. I wouldn't recommend the paid plan as much, but I mean, the free tier is free, so I won't complain. So let's see how well it performs in the coding scenario. I have it connected here. So, let's start with something simple and let's ask it to make a Minesweeper game. And I also want a little bit more features, which I have also detailed here. So, you can see that it starts doing it, and it generates the code here. It is quite fast, to be honest. And that's what OpenAI was also showing in their tweet. Plus, the interface is also a little more appealing to me and quite easy to use. So, it has now created the file here and asks for approval to write it. So, let's approve it here. Now, it gets on to the next file creation here, and you can again see the stuff being generated here. So, it generated two more files, and I approved all of them, and now it's done and it asks me to run it with this command. So, if I approve it, then it will run the command on my machine, and you can see that it opens up the browser window, and we can view it here. 
Okay, this looks pretty, and it works really well. It also has the history of wins and losses as well. I never win in Minesweeper, but it's still cool to see the losses here. Anyway, I don't know why it has this space here, but overall, I'd say it looks great. I really like the simplicity of using it. I mean, there's Bolt and V0 as well, which are kind of similar, but they're just too cluttered for me, and it feels like I'm not getting anywhere with those tools because I don't have the code locally stored. But this stores the code locally while giving a good UI for interaction. Anyway, let's try to do something more complex with this. So, I created an Expo app and started the exponent client server thing in it, and then now I have the window here where we can chat. So, I want it to make me a water intake tracker app. I want to have a target of water to drink in a day, and I want an option to mark the intake as I go. Let's send it and see how well it performs. It's again generating the stuff, and it first asks to run the ls command and list the directory. So, I approved it here, and now it has the context of the directory. Now, it wants to see the app directory as well. So, let's approve this over here. Now, it has started generating the code again. Let's wait a bit. And it's now done. Okay, so it has run the server. Let's try to view it. Okay, this looks pretty great. I mean, the animation and the style are great. This glass style is something that I really like here. And the animation of how it goes up and fills the glass is really interesting. Let's try to make some changes to it as well. Let's ask it to add an option to change the target. Okay, it's doing that. Let's wait a bit. And it's now done. So, it did it. And we can go to the app. And here you can see that we have the option to change the target. And it interacts pretty well just like we want. And we can also reset it here as well, which is also cool. Let's also ask it to add persistent local storage to it as well, because I'd like the data to be persisted. So, it's generating it over here. If we wait a bit, then you can see that it's now done. And if we go back, then you can see that it works well. And the data is now being stored locally, which is great to be honest. But I also wanted to see how it compares to Klein, because it is similar to Klein in a lot of ways, like it can also run commands and stuff. So, I used Klein with Sonnet and gave it the same initial prompt, and it started generating the stuff. So, now we have the app generated by Klein. Now, I think that I prefer the Exponent app better, because that one is much cooler looking and I like the animations and creation better. But Klein is also great. It automatically implemented the local storage, which is a great thing. I like the approach of Exponent here, but it's just that the free tier of Exponent is not so good for me, and I surely wouldn't pay $50 for it either. So, there's some work that surely needs to be done in the pricing segment. I hope when it comes out of early access, the pricing is better, because it's quite high as of now. But I'll still use the free tier sometimes for boilerplate code generation. But it's still great, and one of the best coders that I have seen yet. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member 
by clicking the join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.